All right, let's spend some time talking about dot permits because this always comes up and it's always something we need to discuss, especially when I'm working with a buyer uh, on Lake Kiwi or potentially with a seller wanting to sell the property that might not have a dot. So let's look at a couple different scenarios here. Let's look at a situation where we're buying a lot uh, that, and that does not have a dock on it. What do we have to do? First of all, we want to see if there's an active dock permit on the property the day that we write the contract. Uh, if not, we want to look at uh, when, you know, did it expire? Has it been issued one? And we always want to write it contingent upon the dock size that we want. We never want to close a piece of property at all unless it has a dock permit for that property or if there's a dock already on it. So let's talk about, uh, let's, take it, let's take it a little bit deeper and talk about some more things with a dock permit. So we write the contract, we make it contingent upon the certain size dock that we want because there's no dock there. Well, let's talk about what size docks you can have. You're going to be regulated on Lake Kiwi by square footage requirements for the dock. You can't have more than 1,000 square footage square foot dock footprint for the lake for your for your area so let's take for an average our average dock on the lake is 24 feet wide by 28 feet long that's about 672 square feet and most of the walkways are 40 feet long four feet wide so that's about 160 square feet if my math's right in my head that's about 832 square feet so potentially you can go up to a thousand square feet but your standard dock is like a 24 by 28 with a 40 foot walkway and of course we could always apply for a larger longer walkway or a larger dock might do a 28 or a 26 by 32 26 by 30 with a 40 foot so we just kind of have to see what we want for that property and of course some docks are going to be regulated by the coves that you're in you're not willing to exceed one third of the cove so you know if we're in a tight cove that's only 40 feet across we can't expect to get a we cannot expect to get a dock in there that's going to have a 40 foot walkway because we'd cut the cove off and duke is not going to allow that to happen so we always write if there's no dock on the lot we write that property contingent upon the dot that we're desiring and most of the time i can lead you through and kind of give you guidance on what kind of dot it's probably going to be approved for on that property but it's all contingent on that before we close all right so let's say that we write an offer on a uh, property and a um, dock permit is existing on file with the seller. The seller has it permitted right now, but uh, we're, we're writing the contract to sell on June 1st and we want to close on July 15th, but their dock permit expires August the 30th. Got to be careful there because most of the time dock builders are not going to be able to put a dock together and deliver it to your property at this time of the year in summertime within eight weeks. So we probably want that seller to reapply for that dot permit because these dot permits are good for one year from the date they are issued so if we wrote an offer in june and the permit expires at the end of uh end of august that would not give us time to get that dock so the seller would, would reapply for us and to say that it got issued on july 15th well then it would be good until july 15th of the following year so that gives you a whole year to put that dock on that property okay so again two options we get a dock permit uh, and write it contingent upon that when we buy a property uh, and there's no permit at all maybe it has expired so we'll have to get the seller to update that or we might have one that is active but it might expire in two to three months now if it expires nine months down the road with the seller it's active but maybe it expires in december i'm okay with that because that gives you plenty of time to get your dock on the lot and i always tell my buyers that i'm working with look if you've got the money to come to kiwi and buy a lot and you're gonna spend 200, 300, 400,000, 150, whatever, make sure you have enough, make sure you got 20 more, 25,000, 30,000, depending on who you go with, make sure you have enough money left where you can put that dock on that lot but before that permit expires. That's very important because there have been instances on Lake Kiwi in the past where people bought lots several years ago, like in Riverstone, and then Duke Power reclassified the lake and there's some protected plants on the shoreline. So, so some of those people that could have uh, lakefront docks can no longer have lakefront docks anymore. And there they are paying two or three hundred thousand dollars and guess what? They're still sitting there today and cannot get dock permits for them, okay? So dock permits are always a very important thing that we have to think about and that we talk about when we're working together and we look at those uh, individual properties along with the dock permits. So uh, always keep that in mind and we'll walk our way through with the dock permits and talk about those uh, when we get to particular uh, lots that we like here on the lake. Now, let's pretend that uh, we look at a lot and we write an offer on a lot that has a dock on it already. That's great. That means we don't have to worry about a permit. We don't have to go through the permitting process. The seller doesn't have to go through the permitting process. So that's fantastic. But uh, 
keep in consideration that once that dock is on that property, basically your grandfather, and what we do is we look for a little placard that's on that dock that's going to have a Duke Power. It's almost like a small license plate, and it'll have a number on there. If that placard is on that dock, then it's been permitted for that property, and we're okay with that dock the way it sits there today. So, uh, uh, different options on dock permits, and like I said, I always keep you updated and walk you through those. And, uh, you know, dock permits and everything on the lake, you know, any, any lake probably can have changes at times. So obviously we keep you updated with those changes. So that's just a brief overview about dot permits here on Lake Kiwi and how they work.